Hello, this is the Bride of Christ here, and all the glory goes to Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now, I had an interesting dream. At first, I thought maybe I shouldn't talk about it. But... Oh, there goes the phone. Okay, that's you. Ah, spam calls. Anyway, <clears throat> so. <clears throat> the dream started off with me going to college. Now, I was driving down the hills in a, uh, in a Jeep Wrangler. So, uh, I pray and I get to the college. It's, it looks similar to the college I used to attend in reality, but it's different. So, I drive in there, drive through, you know, over the, you know, slow down, go through the lumps and everything, and I go to the, the, there's two lots. There's the first lot when you go through, through, um, and then there's the second lot, and I go for the second lot and find the other parks. It's, the college is huge. And, uh, I park in the second row and the second lot. It's cause it's like a hill. So it's like going up a hill. And there's the first row of the lot, which is more like, um, slant parking, really tight and narrow. And then there's a the second lot, and I park in the second lot. And, uh, well, I park in the second lawn, and I see in the distance there's a line of people. They're all, and there's a woman there with wearing a white mask, and uh, she has one of those um, temperature gum, temperature checkers that you know you check your forehead. Well, I'm sitting in my car and I'm getting my you know books ready and everything, and some girl comes up to me, and, and I roll down my window, and she checks my temperature and. Then she walks away and is like, and I must have normal temperature or something. And I go back and I pack up my books. And so I have I've three of the same textbook, which are big textbooks. They're, they were blue color and they were, you know, a big hefty book and a binder. And I s somehow fits all in the black school bag. So I have a solid black school bag. And the next thing you know, I'm in line uh, waiting to get into the college. And... Uh, every person in that line has to be checked. Now, the everyone's basically wearing masks except for me. I'm not wearing a uh, a mask. So, but nobody says anything to me. The woman checks my temperature. It's normal. Lets me pass. I go in the college, and when I enter through the uh, through the doors, they're you know, clear doors. Um, I notice a lot of the uh, like the gymnasiums uh, boarded up. And a lot of the rooms are all boarded up. And there's like, there's not many classes open and all available and everything because they boarded it all up. And I don't know where the rest of the students went. But I settled down on this chair next to this little table next to a wall. And I take my uh, books out of there and I realize that all three of the books have the same, or all the same again. And uh, there's a red binder in there and I place that on the desk. And the next thing you know, some girl wants to come up and talk to me. I leave my stuff um, piled up on that on top of that table, you know, it's like one of those half tables next to a wall. Um, you know, like I have like those half t um, half tables that form a hexagon. Well, it was one of those tables, and it was a regular plastic chair, like one of those blue plastic chairs that we probably see in an elementary school, not so much a college. But and I go into one into a room that wasn't boarded up, and I talk to her. I don't remember what the conversation's about, but I do start feeling worried about my stuff being left out there and being stolen and knowing that I owe money on those um, school books. I have to return them. I'm renting them. And I'm wondering why I have three books. And, um, and I realize that while I'm talking to her that two of those books aren't mine. They're somebody else's. One is, but the other two are not mine. And they're all the same, same textbook. I come back. My... My textbooks are still there. The binder's still there. I pack it up in the school bag. And at this point, I leave. And it's now dark. It's nighttime. So when I came there, it was daytime, blue sky, um, sunny, normal day. And when I get out of the school, it's dark, midnight, and the stars are out. So I leave, get back in my car, and I go out. There's two gates. There's the first gate where I came in, and then there's a second gate next to the second parking lot. And I get out and drive through that. And that gate has a, has, a, has a traffic light there, whereas the first gate doesn't um, to enter the college. So I get out, and I, I decide to get in the turning lane so I can make a left-hand turn so I can drive home. 
and there's other people behind me and there's traffic and I realized that I can um, make a left on red there's no there's some type of sign that says you can do that so I see the oncoming traffic I keep looking and I see headlights and finally it's open and I drive and then while I'm driving some motorcycle comes flying up with two cars and try cutting me out of the road and push me and they pushed me into the middle of the road and into the turning lane on the road itself and they go around me the two cars other were sedans and the motorcycle was one of those like professional motorcycles you would see in one of those motorcycle racetracks it had the it was red what is with these spam calls anyway <clears throat> it was a red motorcycle with uh, stickers on it, you know, like um, number stickers and all that. And the guy was a guy on it. He was dressed in all in black leather with a helmet. Uh, male or female, I could not tell. They were all dressed in black. And it's night. Remember that. It's dark. And uh, he's driving. And he goes right around me, cuts around me, and uh, keeps going. And I finally get into the lane. And uh, there's a cars in front of me and him in front of me. But he's driving that but powerful motorcycle. He, he looks like he's more like laying down the motorcycle type motorcycle. The way it's designed, it's not like a Harley Davidson or anything. It's like one of those like Japanese motorcycles, but it looks like something you'd be racing like 200 miles on in a racetrack because it just it looks like that type of motorcycle. And the next thing I know, um, I'm home, but the house is not my is not where I live. It looks like it, but it's not. So I'm in the in the kitchen, and uh, Miss Greyshock, my third grade teacher, shows up. And there's somebody in that room with me. I'm talking to some girl, but I can't remember who she was. So anyway, Miss Greyshock shows up. And she looks just like she did when I was in third grade. She hadn't changed even a hair. Then again, I haven't seen her since third grade. So anyway, there she was. She had her hair cut the same way. She was wearing one of her dresses. She always wore dresses as a teacher. And she, had a, and she showed up and she came through the, uh, the mud room. And came into the kitchen. And she's standing, you know, at the threshold of into the enter of the kitchen. And I'm like, I was shocked to see her after all after all these years. And I say hello to her. And she starts um, talking to me, hearing that I was asking what I was doing. And I said I was in college and working. And she smiled with this um, bright smile. And she was wearing bright red lipstick like she always did. And she smiled. And her teeth were very pretty and white. And, and like, she was glad that I was going to work. And college, and then I told. Then she tells me that her son has a place to rent down in, in the town, and it was called Newtown that he had a place to live in, not far from where my college was. And it was like, she said it had a water fountain in it, and um, I told her I couldn't move um, unless I was married because of. Because of family and everything, they weren't ready for me to leave yet. And I was also thinking in my head about costs. How much cost would it cost to rent a house down there and and all that. And the con and college fees and gas and everything else. And I, it wasn't adding up good in my head. <laughs> so, but I didn't say that to her. I was just thinking about costs and money. So, and she doesn't get, she frowns then when I wouldn't take her offer of moving into her son's place. And I did get an image of like her son's place was some type of stone stone building of some sort. Made out of stone. Stone farmhouse. Maybe a, a barn conversion. I don't know. It was some type of stone building. And that's when she leaves. She just walks right out of the room and leaves. It's like, well, you won't take my offer of moving into my into my son's place and, and renting it. Then forget it. And she leaves. And I don't get that at all, but she just walks right out and leaves. It doesn't even say goodbye. Um, walks right out of the kitchen and, and through the bedroom and out the door. I'm gone, and I don't see her again. There's some girl that I was talking to in that room, and she just stands there. And uh, and that was the end of the dream. It was kind of strange. I mean... Where the part with what got me was the part with like standing in line and being checked before you go into the college campus was what really got me. It's like you had to stand on this long line with all these other other college students and you couldn't enter the building unless you were checked. For your temperature, so your your temperature had to be checked. 
Well, I'll be back as the Lord leads, and uh, that was pretty interesting. I haven't seen Miss Miss Grishok in a long, long time. I don't even know if she was alive. She retired. Her husband retired um, from the teaching middle school before I before um, I even got her as third grade teacher. And then when I got her as third grade teacher, she was like in her sixties. And and not long after I had her, she retired from teaching and uh, left because. And then uh, that was the last I heard of her. She also loved bees and had a uh, had a, a thing for collecting anything bee themed. And she had I I think she had like a honey hives at her home. I'm not 100 percent sure anymore. That was this is coming from an eight nine year old's information. So <laughs> anyway, that's just that. I'll be back as the Lord leads.